What's up, Get Better Basketball community? I'm Coach DeMarco, and this is Focus. In today's episode, I'm going to give you a quick breakdown of one of the most popular full court or really three quarter court presses used in the game, the one, two, two press. This is especially popular at the college level where teams like Gonzaga and Villanova, when Jay Wright was there, use this press. And today I'm going to show you both the Zags and Villanova using this press and how they use it to benefit their team. Duke also would use this from time to time with Mike Krzyzewski, and a lot of other teams used it as well. I love this press because, in my opinion, it's a pretty simple press, and it's one that is not super risky for your team. I think when you get into the full court diamond press, run and jump, full court man, you're taking a lot of risks. Even the three quarter court diamond press has some elements of that, although it's a little bit, for lack of a better word, safer than you know a full court press where there's more space to get beat down the floor. But I, I'm only going to put three players on the floor because I really think this is what you have to be really good at in this press. It's taken away the middle. Now, in the diamond press, you would have a player in the middle that would be in that spot taking that away and you're looking to trap, and it's a little bit easier. Um, in this press, or that player might be behind uh, the, the person there, depending on how you have them located, but most likely back here. In this press, you don't have that middle player. So just real quick, if the basketball is over here, this player is going to kind of step into this area, similar to what I talk about in my diamond press, three-quarter diamond press video, kind of angle the basketball. You don't want to get down in this area because you're giving them the middle, you have to sort of try to funnel them and keep them on the sideline and get them to kind of go up this way. The other thing is, you'll see in the video, they're trying to take away this pass back across. Now, as this starts to happen, this player is going to start to converge. You're going to start to converge, and hopefully they're dribbling up the sideline, and you're going to get some type of trap. The important rotation here is this player rotating back into the middle. They might be a step behind. They might be a step behind this player. They can cut in front and get a steal. But this is where teams are going to try to go here. And then they're going to try to get a player potentially up the sideline. Here, middle, opposite, and then get it into the middle of the floor so you don't get trapped on the sideline. So I can talk more about that down the road. I, when I talk about press breakers, that's always middle, opposite, and go is a great way to get up the floor and, 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 and attack full court pressure. As I like to say, the press is not broken until you give up a basket, and that's always been our mentality. So right here, again, you have this player kind of converging. Ideally, Tall, athletic player. They can really get in the passing lane. Those are teams that like to use this. You look at some of the teams, um, the college teams that use it. You could have a smaller player here, but it's it's not going to be an advantage in terms of getting in the passing lane, but maybe it is to trap. Smaller teams, I like to go run and jump. Um, you could do that with a long and athletic fast team too, but... I would be less likely to use uh, this press or a full court diamond with longer athletic teams. I would be more likely to use it. All right. So just real quick, pass goes back across. Again, this player kind of funneling the ball, getting in the passing lane, getting over here. They're going to kind of try to converge as this player goes, and they're going to try to converge on the sideline and get some type of trap as they come up. Try to get here, try to get here and get a trap. Again, the key. This player has got to rotate into the middle. If you can master these two players rotating into the middle quickly to take it away, ball goes back across, this player rotates middle. Ball goes back across, this player rotates middle. If you can get really good at that, then you'll be effective in this press. It's methodical. You can get some 10-second counts because teams are going to pass the ball back and forth. I liken it to another press, and that's the 2-2-1 press where these two players have to rotate back into the middle depending on where the ball is, and you get, in a 2-2-1 press, you get these middle rotations, and you're going to get traps on the sideline with these two players. So the 1-2-2 press, in my opinion, plays very similar. I think if you use a 2-2-1, it's easy for you to put a player up here, 
with these two players and then two players on this end of the floor and go with this 1-2-2 two, two look. These two back players, um, they can be interceptors on any lob passes. They can sort of pinch in and help take away the middle. I really don't overcoach it. Their main responsibility for me was always protect the basket as much as possible. You're the last line of defense. And what I like about this press is you're going to get these two players as back players. And then if you are getting a trap on this sideline with two players, you're also going to have this player rotating back to the middle. So you're going to have three players back in a triangle with these two trappers. And it's a little bit easier than like a run and jump or a full court diamond where you're going to have three, four players really committed up to the basketball, maybe only one back player. So let's take a look at uh, Gonzaga and Villanova using the three-quarter court one two two press. So the first team we're going to look at here is Villanova. In this three-quarter court press, they have their player a little bit further back. Some teams have them at the free throw line. Some teams at the top of the key. Do what works for your team. You're going to see this is a long and athletic player for Villanova. Now, as that pass goes over to the sideline, see how these, these three players are really working in unison. Jump to the ball, jump to the ball, getting ready to trap, and jump into the middle. So they're all working together to get in position. That pass goes back. Player's going to jump to the ball. Does a nice job here trying to take away that pass back across. This player is moving, and you're going to see this player rotate into the middle depending on where the basketball goes next. So here you go. These two players are looking to be your trappers. Here is your middle rotation, and you have your two back players. You know, this player could be up a step or two, but you don't want to get beat over the top. So I think with this press, it's more methodical. It's more about making teams use the clock than it is being overly aggressive for steals. And what you'll see here is, good, they're going to throw the ball back again. They decide now we're not going to trap here. You could. You could jump to it and trap. They're going to get back, and they're going to get matched up. Now let's take another look at this at full speed. See the rotations jump into the middle. When the ball comes over half court, they are going to then get matched up. This player is going to get matched up here, and they're going to have to rotate and fix it and get matched up with the personnel. It takes a lot of communication. Some teams might go back to a 1-2-2 two, two zone. Some teams might go back to a 2-3 zone. Um, what we like to do is go back to man-to-man, -to -man, so these players have to communicate and make sure they're matched up with the appropriate players. You don't want to get mismatches, which could happen if you don't use that communication. Now let's take a look at the Zags. As we look at the Zags, the first thing you're going to notice is that this player is going to be up a lot higher or further than Villanova. Villanova had their player in this spot. Gonzaga is going to have their player in the free throw line area. Notice this player. He's taken away that middle cut, and this player could come up to trap. Right there, he was getting ready to, depending on where the basketball is. Again, you could cheat up with these back players, and they could be interceptors. Gonzaga doesn't want to do that. They're just trying to slow the tempo down. Gonzaga loves to do this in ATO situations. Uh, there's a timeout, and they like to come out in this. Or sometimes they come out at the start of the game. This is early in the basketball game, depending on their opponent. But often it's an after timeout situation. So now the ball comes over half court. Gonzaga's got to get matched up. I got ball. I'm here. This player is here, and they're all going to get matched up. But the thing I want you to recognize, even though they're trying to, the, the press is methodical and it's not a, a, a super risky press like a run and jump, it's still going to speed up Texas Tech. They couldn't make the pass back when the Zags came over to trap or take away that player. They're going to sprint in. There's about 20 seconds left on the shot clock, and they're going to take a, a contested three-pointer. I would think most coaches would say, yeah, but it's a driving kick three, but you could probably get a better shot. So I think this was really a product of the Zags speeding up Texas Tech, and he's going to miss the shot, and they secure the rebound. One more time as we watch it, look at them take away that middle cut, which is such an important part of this press. Now let's check it out at full speed. You'll see the rotations. They almost get a trap here. They speed up Texas Tech, and they, get, and they end up getting... Rebound off a quick shot. 
You can see why the 122 press is one of the most popular presses in the game. It's easy to coach up with your players. You can rep those rotations, especially with these three up players. You can even do some three man drills to work on those rotations. Uh, just a quick pass back and forth, two coaches and two managers, player in the middle, and have these players rotating and this front player up on the ball. Just like I showed you, you can have three offensive players and just work on middle rotation, and this player taking away the passes across. You can make it a game, deflections, turnovers, you can give points, uh, however you want to do it. Great way to show or teach this press, which I think is one of the easier presses to teach if you can really focus in on those rotations and that aspect of the press. If you like this press, make sure you hit that like button down below, turn on your notifications, and subscribe to Get Better Basketball on YouTube for more great video breakdowns each and every week. If you're going to use this press for your team, or if you already use it, drop me a comment down below. Let me know what you think about this video. As always, get better every day.